am here in the AFI silver screen and I just saw a guy uh, step into a bathroom stall and rip a massive shit. Uh, but actually, I just saw the kid brother from Harold Lloyd and they had the Pichurine Orchestra playing. And uh, I love Harold Lloyd's films. This was an amazing experience because first of all, the orchestra was great and the music and the cues and everything were great, but the storytelling in The Kid Brother, I've seen it once or twice before, is amazing. I can't believe how good it is, and uh, after having studied screenwriting a little bit and um, really trying to learn how to do it myself, just seeing how well Harold Lloyd puts into practice all these principles of screenwriting I've been studying. People just think of his films as comedy, but it's so great how he manages to layer in like interconnected character conflicts, where each character has different values that they're pressing down on each other, and there's different variations on the theme with each character, and how each character and setting is an extension of the main character, the hero, Harold Hicks who's the youngest brother of uh, two siblings and the dad is the sheriff of the town. He's collected money to build a dam and he's about to deliver it to the state, I guess, the next day. But then a medicine show, it's basically a traveling carnival, comes into town and they're a bunch of con artists. They find out about the money Harold's dad has stored away ready to pay for the dam and they decide to go steal it. And there's a woman who performs in the medicine show, uh, Jobina Ralston who Harold Lloyd falls in love with and there's all these complications and the way he layers in conflict after conflict in each scene so that it raises the stakes. There's a mix of good news and bad news in each scene. There's um, a sense of a ticking clock where it's like this is going to uh, end up somehow where uh, where like this can't go on forever like this there's there has to be a there's a resolution that's going to come that's inevitable the physical gags are amazing it's beautifully shot it's so surprising and funny there's a little monkey in the movie that's hilarious i don't know how they trained it to do the things it did um it was all incredible the theater's incredible here what more can i say about it except I did really go to the bathroom and hear a guy go into the bathroom stall. Hey, I'm sorry to the guy if he sees this, but it was funny. He said, oh my goodness. And he went into the stall and I hear just ripping ass in there. Oh my god. And this little kid, this must have been four years old, said, dad, who's farting? Uh, anyways, it just I can't say enough about this movie. How incredibly what and the locations in the movie. There's a ghost ship, like an abandoned ship, that comes into play, and it's a, uh, the climax is set in it. The invention of all these different ways of fighting that Harold Lloyd uses, and you can see in Jackie Chan's films how much he's influenced by Harold Lloyd. The way Lloyd uses props, invention, the way he hides, ducks, misleads people, uses disguises all incredible gags in this action and it all gives a sense of like weight and physics like each moment bears down on the next moment and there's a great physicality to it and it's all beautifully shot too I can't believe how well this is shot considering how difficult it was to shoot I don't even know if the camera operators could see what they were shooting because um, I've heard for some silent films they couldn't see there was no viewfinder anyways just incredible experience here uh, they do lots of specialty programming at the AFI. The locations, especially this abandoned ship, it it reminded me of all these storytelling principles I'm learning regarding how to make the settings variants on the theme and make it extensions of the hero character. Hilarious, the gags, the casting is great. Uh, the guy ripped ass afterwards. The orchestra is fantastic, so go see their shows whenever you can. It was only $15 for the ticket, plus $1 for, a, I guess, a service charge. Now, also, I want to add, I, I don't know what's wrong with me, when I sleep well, when I sleep for like, go, when I go to bed, even relatively early, relatively early for me was like 3 in the morning last night, I have the most insane, uh, bizarre dreams that make me think I should just commit myself to a mental hospital. So here's what happened last night. I was dreaming I had a, a different family, it was a dream family. I was a black guy. My younger, like, 12-year-old brother was a black kid, and my dad was my white co-worker. <laughs> He's kind of a hillbilly. Oh, there's the orchestra. Yeah, they were great. So, my dad and my brother in this muscle car, we went to some sort of, like, little shopping center. Felt like it would have been in Falls Church, and 
and a hitman was trying to kill us with a silencer, with a pistol with a silencer. So uh, somehow my dad, through some ingenuity, and maybe me, I can't remember, were fighting him, and the silencer was influenced by watching Where Eagles Dare, which I was watching last night, another great movie with Clint Eastwood and Richard Burton, where they play uh, American commandos who infiltrate a, a castle in Germany to rescue a general in World War II. A great movie. You can see its influence on Inglorious Bastards. Uh, anyway, so I, I, I dreamed like this hitman was trying to kill us and we sort of managed to stop him or kill him and it was more ingenious stuff just like in it, Where Eagles Dare, which is a great film. I dreamed that and then somehow we got away but there was some bloodshed, I don't remember exactly, and then the police were looking for everybody and the police were out just like how I remember when this uh, jailed convict or mental patient escaped, he was awaiting trial or something in Annandale. He stole, he stole a, or he snuck on a bus or something and carjacked somebody. And I remember going down the street, cops everywhere. I went to Home Depot, there were co cops in the parking lot. Uh, there were cops every. I dreamed that I was this black guy walking down the street and I was trying to disguise myself by having a backpack on and I'm not sure they would recognize me. And there were military out everywhere and I was walking by and I remember seeing them arrest Want my friend or my brother or something. I don't remember who it was exactly, but I was really scared and I went home and uh, for some reason I lived in an apartment building and the apartment was under construction so I couldn't go in the apartment and then uh, the problem was so not only could I not go in there, but so, for some reason Seth Meyers was filming his show in the building and so his pro his directors or producers were telling me like shh be quiet he's trying to film now and somehow I was working on the show but I didn't know what to do so I was trying to lay down I felt like I was on this uneven surface and of course when I woke up I was on my bed this uneven surface then I fell back to sleep <laughs> I woke up then I fell back to sleep but what happened then I'm trying to remember Now I forget again, but it, it was something else really bizarre and unsettling. And uh, yeah, again, I'm like, why do I have to have these insane dreams? How does my mind come up with it? Anyways, this is a great place here. space here. Beautiful place, I love it here. No smoking or vaping anywhere on this property. And I get so many ideas from watching movies like The Kid Brother. The storytelling is so incredible. I'm going to study that just for the, my, the own movie that I'm uh, writing right now because the same principles of storytelling apply. Harold Lloyd, he pushes, he has these complications, he has a false victory, he um, then gets a huge setback he, where he goes to the, the lowest point in the story and um, then he has to fight with all his strength to be able to defeat the uh, bad guys, get back the money that they stole from his dad, the sheriff, prove himself to his brothers and his dad, get the woman he loves. <laughs> it's so, all the multi-dimensional conflict is amazing. And there were a lot of people there. The theater was had a decent attendance, which is kind of surprising, but I was also not surprised in a way because it's such a great movie and experience and I was so glad to see it and of course the orchestra was there that's another draw of seeing it live and uh, if you're wondering my, why my mom didn't review it she didn't have time to come out here I asked if she could but that's what I know I told her get your act together get your life together you should have made more money you should have waited to have kids does anyone ever blast decent music out of their car it's always crap great experience I've got to go Gotta put this video up and go to work tonight. Harold Lloyd gets a lot of credit for comedy, but he was a, an incredible storyteller. He is an incredible filmmaker, him and his whole crew. And you can see that in just how much invention there is in these stories. That's why I like him so much more than um, Charlie Chaplin or Buster Keaton. I like them too, they were great, but there's something a little bit more flat about them. And granted, You'll appreciate them more if you like that sort of weird perspective that they have, but I like the more middle class 
um, persona of Lloyd's characters, which is always just an ordinary guy, not like an outsider, but an ordinary or less than average guy who just tries incredibly hard and through the power of his um, ingenuity and decency manages to change the people around him and to prove himself and get validation from others and be a better, more her courageous person. Watch Harold Lloyd movies, I support them. Come out to the AFI and if you park, notice where I'm parking here, this is Ellsworth Avenue on the Town Square, oops, Town Square Garage or just take the Metro here but the Metro is a total mess. Try and get my mom out to stuff like this and my dad. I've brought them here before for a silent film Sunrise and they loved it. That was with an organist and I know they would have loved this uh, but uh, anyways maybe another time. Keep subscribing, keep supporting the videos, please. It's so important. I'm pushing myself to make a video every single day this month, no matter what. I really want to dedicate myself to them. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Subscribe, like, favorite, all that stuff. Now to go to my car. It's a nice little garage here. and you don't have to pay on Sundays.